Hi everyone. I'm back with a hopefully re rather quick video about the operation of the new heat pump that's being uh, shipped on Model Y and the newer Model 3 Teslas. A lot of people have asked questions about it, aren't sure how it works, so I thought I'd uh, do this little uh, video on it. This is the heat pump system. Um, it's a lot of the same parts that you would have found in, in a Model 3. It's almost the same air conditioning compressor, which is this thing. This is basically a pump. It you know sucks refrigerant gas in here and then discharges it here. It's uh, driven directly off high voltage. It's got an internal inverter that takes the DC from the battery and generates three-phase AC to run its motor. And then uh, we have this thing called the super manifold, or that's what Tesla calls it. It comprises a number of refrigerant valves, including a special kind called a computer-controlled expansion valve or electronic expansion valve, which are these things here. They're basically stepper motors that drive a little a needle valve uh, inside the manifold for uh, porting refrigerant to different ports. It also allows the computer uh, and the computer in this case is VC front, vehicle controller front, which uh, I have not done a teardown yet on the new design, but maybe soon. Um, it allows VC front to control the expansion rate of the refrigerant, and that's just a, a valve, is basically all it is. It, as the refrigerant is squeezed through a tiny opening, um, the refrigerant loses pressure, and when it, that pressure change can trigger boiling and phase change, which is how uh, air conditioning and heat pumps operate. So, um, on the normal Model 3 and uh, the newer ones, this is the, air, the fresh air intake. Normally there's plastic here that allows fresh air to be drawn from the cowling area. That's where the air goes in. And I have an older Model 3 climate control box it's upside down on the floor now. So this is that same inlet grill, and there's a door behind there that lets it choose between fresh air and recirc. And that's how you can, uh, when you select that, that the, a motor uh, moves in there and the car will automatically do it uh, from time to time too. Um, inside there, you can see there's a squirrel cage fan. That's a three phase brushless motor controlled by, I believe, VC Wright. And this is the refrigerant lines that go to the in internal evaporator, which I think you can see right there, those fins. Let me see if I can drop the phone in. There you go, yeah. Looks like a radiator. That's all it does is allows uh, the heat in the passenger compartment that's being blown by that to boil the refrigerant. The refrigerant then takes that heat energy out as, as a hot gas. This is the heater core. This is an electric resistance heater that runs off battery voltage. It's got two zones, a left and a right, that are divided in here so that the left and right passenger can set their own heating options. And that would plug into here, um, and the air flows through there, and then, well, I guess it flows through the air conditioning, then the heat, then out. And it would come out of these holes here and go to the duct work, and then on the top, there's some ducts that go to the dash fence. Um, of course, as the, the evaporator works, it gets cold, so a lot of moisture condenses on it, and that would drain out of this hole. So anytime you see a puddle under your car, that's where it's coming from. <coughs> now here, on the new heat pump car, you can see there's not just two lines going in there, there's five. So what they've done is they've removed the PTC electric resistance heater and replaced that with two more coils, one for passenger, one for driver. So there's a common line and then two uh, you know, inputs or outputs that let them uh, run the heater. So they didn't really have to change the climate control box much. And that re these refrigerant lines come down to the super manifold and all those expansion valves, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, and like another solenoid, a couple pressure sensors, that kind of thing. 
This is the uh, basically the reservoir um, called a receiver. It just holds excess refrigerant. It also contains a filter and a desiccant bag to remove any moisture that might have accumulated in the refrigerant or was actually was in there since uh, it can get in two ways. One, it can be in during manufacturing and two, it can actually get through the rubber and get in there over time and you can't have refer or you can't have water freezing in the refrigerant because it'll block the tiny passages. So the compressor runs and you know when it's uh, compressing refrigerant it squeezes it and th that pressure change causes it to give off its heat. It's basically like a sponge. You think of the refrigerant as a sponge. When it squeezes the refrigerant it, it wrings it of all the heat. That's the, just the easiest way to imagine it. So what would normally happen in a normal air conditioner is the line that comes out of the compressor would go up here to a big coil called a condenser. And that's when the hot gas would be condensed back into a liquid, releasing all its heat to the atmosphere. Then the liquid refrigerant would go back up here through an expansion valve, which isn't here. It's actually down here. It's probably that one. Um, but on an older car, it would go in here. It would go through that expansion valve under high pressure and then because it's being squeezed through a valve, the pressure would drop, it would immediately begin boiling and then pick up heat from the inside evaporator. And then it would come back out here, go into the compressor and repeat. So all they've done is complicated that, that system by adding more loops. So if you look down here, you notice there's no refrigerant lines, there's just the glycol going in here. What they've done for versatility and it probably also reduces cost, is they just have a large glycol radiator, and then any heat that they need to get rid of the refrigerant, they do here. This is called the liquid-cooled condenser. It, it's a heat exchanger. Each, each plate, um, has one side of the plate has refrigerant, the other side has glycol, and you know, there's a lot of plates here. So there's a lot of surface area for that heat to move between the liquids without them mixing. So <clears throat> when they want to condense the hot gas refrigerant, they run it into here, it gives off its heat to the glycol, and then the glycol is circulated here, or maybe they need to warm the battery uh, because you're supercharging, so they can actually use the waste heat to warm the battery. That's why there's so many expansion valves on here. They can make the refrigerant flow almost anywhere they want and scavenge waste heat more effectively. Now, why a heat pump? Like, why would you go to all this trouble? This is an electric resistance heater. It's 100% efficient thereabouts. Almost all the electricity that goes in there will come out as heat here. But the magic of a heat pump is it can be much more efficient. You know, it's a, a common heat pump is easily four times as efficient. And that depends on the, the temperature delta. But it's way cheaper energy-wise to move the heat that already exists rather than to make new heat. Anytime you're making new heat, that's bad for energy. So we've, we've gotten around that. They're just taking the heat that already exists either outside or maybe in one of the powertrain systems or the battery and moving it inside. It, it, it uh, uses far less of your battery charge doing that. So yeah, that's, that's basically how it works. Also, there's a companion to the liquid cooled condenser. There's a, you know, a chiller assembly and you know the Model 3 had this already. This is how they use the you know air conditioning function of the heat pump to you know cool the glycol if they're trying to cool the powertrain or the um, battery during supercharging. It's highly likely that this cooling system could be could move more heat out of the powertrain and the battery. So this car might act, this car or the newer Model 3 performance might do a lot better on the track. Um, I don't know if that's been tested or not. Maybe uh, maybe I can find someone to do that. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the heat pump. The, there's also, back here is, is the reservoir, and that goes down to, you know, a, a mold, I think it's a five port valve, if I remember right. Um, very similar, it might, actually might be an eight port valve, because they've got two more ports that need to switch in the condenser. Yeah, in fact, I remember that they, they have an octopus theme. They call it the octoport, uh, octavalve, sorry. Yeah, so that's how it works. If you have any other questions, um, leave them below. I'll try to answer them. I look at all the comments. 
So if you have anything else you'd like to know about a Tesla or you know electronics or EVs in general, I'm happy to answer it. I can do a video if there's enough enough interest in it. That's all. Have a good day.